This time we'll get the heads up display into the game. We'll have to solve several problems including surface overlays for the minimap and text scrolling for the ticker. This object is the most complicated and highly coupled object we'll create during prototyping. A better design would probably split this up into several child objects. I expect to go through several debug passes to get this right. So we'll have to spend the first few minutes correcting a mistake from our asset segment. Actually, I completely forgot to extract the assets for the HUD that we'll be using this time. So let's go back into PowerShell and get the files. We'll need three of these files. I'll rename them to avoid collisions after I change the extensions to bitmap. Also grab the palette and the make file. Extracting these files will basically be a copy of our BLK file procedure, except we'll fix the file dimensions by hand. Edit the make file. Create a new source file. I'll just copy what we need from the BLK file. Drag everything down to main. I'll grab all the declarations too. We'll need to open the data file and the palette file. I want these file metrics but not like this. Instead I'll set them based on the file name. I already went through and calculated what we need so please press the I believe button on this part. Now we'll just take everything else as is. I need to check to make sure the dimensions and the counts match, which they don't. We'll be using a 9-bit number for the HUD graphic. Okay, let's build. Looks like it worked. Now let's check the graphics. Looks good. Now let's bring them in the game maker. New HUD group. Drag them in. Let's take a look at the design document. So we have a lot of moving parts in the HUD. Every object in the mission sequence, including weapon projectiles, reports to the HUD in some way. The number of objects and interactions almost guarantees that we're going to have a few mistakes here. Our goal this time is to just get everything functioning. I'm going to use a fairly flat implementation with all the widgets grouped into the same code block and commented. It's not graceful, but it should work. So let's create some variables and separate them by widget task. Some high level fading. We'll be using a game maker abstraction called the GUI, which is different from our use of the view. The GUI positions use absolute screen positions and have no relation to the room at all. The problem is that since we're scaling everything, including the sprites, we need to calculate our scaling factors and then the absolute window positions related to the bottom, which is where the HUD will be. Now we'll get weapon data from the player. Now for the Direction Finder widget, we'll create 8 buckets that hold a particular color. The player ship will also have 8 buckets which will count where each of the other ships are, so we can create the resulting color. For now, the HUD will just hold the assigned color, which defaults to the empty black. We'll have a ticker that passes messages on the bottom right. We'll basically need a string holder for the entire message, the partial message, and the displayed message, and a timer. Our minimap will use two surfaces. One of them has the raw map data based on our collision map, and the other will be an overlay that each ship and projectile draws itself to every turn. We'll clear the overlay every turn. In destroy, we'll free the surfaces. In room start, we'll set all the references so you can appreciate the level of coupling we have to deal with here. So we'll start each step by clearing all the HUD data and collecting it again. We'll clear all the health and ammo statistics. 
Then if the player's alive, we'll collect them all again. The health and armor will be normalized at 12 points in order to draw the health bar in sections like the original game. Now we'll update the targets box. I'll have to reference the player's target box to access the count that we'll use in the color calculation. We'll just have to make this work in the ship object after we resolve it. We're going to add the intensity of the red color for each ship in the particular sector. We'll have the headquarters object add to the blue color. I'll make it peek out after roughly four ships. We don't want to go over 255 for a color intensity. If there's no ships in a sector, we'll default to black. Let's go to the ship object and resolve this link. I'll start by bringing in the HUD reference. Every turn I'll clear the priority queue that holds all enemy ship references. I'll also clear the target box. Now I want to find all the ships and the headquarters object. And here's a quick hack that'll do that. I'll loop through the number of ships, but since ship counting starts at zero, we'll have one extra loop, which I'll use to grab the headquarters object. Each ship will set a value to one, and the headquarters will set the value to 32. Remember, we used a modulus of 32 to detect the headquarters in the HUD bucket. I want the direction and the distance of each object. If it's a ship, I'll add it to the priority queue using the distance as the metric. Now I want to separate each of the angles around the ship into the eight buckets we need. Each ship or headquarters adds a value to the box. While I'm out here, I'll make sure the headquarters object has a reference to the HUD object. I also have to give the headquarters a meaningful position on the map. I'll set it to the location of the traffic department HQ, which is at grid position 107 by 106. Now back to our HUD widget. We'll draw the backlight for the missile color based on if we're using missiles and then based on the fire delay. Actually, I'll just check for all the missile types so we don't have to revisit this later. Also, make sure we have missiles. Now for the minimap ranges. I want to use the camera object to set the square dimensions of 20 points around it. The player is always in the center of the box. Now we'll update the message ticker. Set the font so we can calculate string size. Tick down the timer. This procedure advances the ticker across the widget. This procedure sets a new ticker message. We want it to be spaced off the right side of the screen initially so we can scroll it back. Now the default fade out behavior will be our room changing mechanism like everywhere else. Actually now that I think about it, this would probably be better off in the headquarters object since it controls the mission flow. We'll either go back to the main menu if we die, or we'll go to the debriefing. Now I want to edit the HUD sprite for how we'll use it. First I'll reset the origin to the bottom left since our HUD is bottom aligned. Then we'll get rid of the missile so we can backlight it. Then I'll paint out the direction finder and the statistics section. Now we're ready to draw all the components. I've already measured out all the locations prior to this video, so don't worry if you don't know where the numbers are coming from. First the missile backlight. Again, all our drawing has to use the scaling factor because of GUI restrictions. I debated whether to use it or not in order to avoid these ugly drawing blocks. Now we'll draw the weapon overlay. We can use the type as the sprite frame index because I put the enum in the same order as the sprites appear, minus the one-off case. Now the missile counter. We'll draw alternating red and white hashes. Remember, it looks like this in the hood.
So these sprite bars could be complicated, so I'll just make a 4x4 sprite segment that will mask with color. We'll use 12 of them to fill up the bar. The number of the bar indicates the color. Now we'll draw the two layers of the minimap in the square. Remember the lower layer is the map and the upper layer holds all the ships and other points of interest. Finally the targets box. This is ugly because all of the boxes are slightly different sizes and offset in unusual ways. We'll just set the color of each box to some mix of red or blue that we calculated and then draw it in the position starting at 3 o'clock and going counterclockwise. Now we'll draw the message ticker. We'll use the little font and include the shadow first. Finally, we'll draw the black box overlay as usual. We'll use a new event called Draw Begin to build the minimaps. The lower layer will only be created once using that trigger variable called Minimap Create. We'll loop through the 201 by 201 grid. We'll draw open space in dark gray and collidable areas in light gray. In the original game, there's also a border to accentuate the collidable areas, but we'll add that to our tweak list for now. Instead of drawing a point or a single pixel, I'll try a different method of masking a 1 by one white pixel. There's no particular reason for this except I've had issues with off by one errors in certain drawing functions recently. Off by one when drawing a point tends to cause nothing to happen. So for the overlay layer, the HUD is only going to clear it every turn. We'll do this in draw begin so it doesn't interfere with objects drawing to it out of order. In order to test the ticker, I'm going to add a test message on the mission start. Actually, I want an entire script to act as the interface to the ticker, which can be called from any object. I'll call it HUD message. In the ship drawing event, I want to draw the colored pointer that shows us the nearest goal. Now, this would normally be a HUD element, except I don't want to convert between world space and GUI space. The information for the pointer comes from the data structure in the ship anyway. For now, we'll just go for the nearest ship. I'll draw a short line in the direction of the target, and I'll color that line based on the target's alignment. Now we'll have ships draw their point on the minimap. I'm going to restrict the drawing to ships visible on the minimap using the four corners check. This notation is cumbersome but easy to understand. I'll probably move it to a script later. So we'll draw the point color based on alignment and the ship's current position. Now we're going to try to copy this whole thing and move it to the object fire draw event too, so projectiles appear on the minimap. We'll draw them in white. 
Finally, I want to check the camera to make sure I have that reference in there for the map position variable. I used it in the HUD step event, but I'm not sure I actually had a variable declared for it. Now we'll test and see what kind of typos I made. I'm sure I made some. Of course, it was in that long statement I said wouldn't work out. Okay, but that's not it. Let's see, I think I mistyped one of the HUD display variables. Okay, we're running, but it's ugly. It crashed right when I tried to fire the guns. It looks like I forgot to add the HUD reference to the fire object. But let's look at everything else. I apparently forgot to break the weapon sprite up into multiple frames. That one hurts. All right, there's a problem with the pointer around the ship. It looks like the direction finder has invalid colors everywhere except the first location. Hmm, looks like there's one ship there because it's not quite black. The ticker might have been working, and the ships were displaying on the HUD except they all look like a neutral ship. That might be right because I don't think I ever set any ship alignments except the default. Okay, let's take care of some of these. We'll fix the crash bug by closing the reference. The other issue is the bad sprite strip. The weapon one has six frames and the comm link has five. Let's bring those back in correctly. So the ticker is working as intended. Notice the direction finder appears to be working for the first slot too. I can see gunfire on the minimap. I can change weapons too and the sprite matches. The missile counter and backlight both work. Notice the headquarters is also visible in the first spot. Okay, let's fix the direction finder. So the first one works. Oh, I just copied it down. Actually, these need to be AND comparisons, not OR. Now let's look at the Mr. On pointer around the ship. I forgot to make all the right changes after I copied and pasted. Direction finder looks great now. There's still an issue with the pointer. In fact, it's more broken than I thought. It looks like it's not even pointing at the nearest ship. This has to be a problem with the priority queue metric. There's also a little bit of jitter around the player on the minimap. I mean, it might be a calculation order problem. Let's give the ships some alignments. I'll use that polymorphic code block that I put in room start. 
Actually, we've been having some execution order issues lately, so I'm not going to rely on room start to execute things in the sequence. Instead, I'm going to make this a user-defined event and call it explicitly on ship create. I'm going to give each ship a default alignment. Now the alignment is obvious on the minimap. Pointer's still broken. It's not pointing at the nearest ship. It might be close to right now. It kind of changed color. Still seeing the minimap jitter. I'll move the position calculation on our next try. So I'll move the ship position to the end step. I'm just guessing on this, it might not work. Now what's wrong with the priority queue? Ah, look at that. I'm returning the direction and calling it distance. I really want the distance. And that should do it. I think we're close to what we want from the HUD. Like I said before, I don't think this is an excellent design. There should probably be a well-defined interface between the objects and the HUD. Also the code should be split up between different widgets. Each widget probably deserves its own dedicated object. Next time we'll try to get the AI to actually fight back. We might even fix the balance issue so that we can destroy ships too.